Next, we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Arthur Abraham. Armenian born but a German citizen, Arthur Abraham once showed promise as a junior cyclist. But after seeing a young Iron Mike Tyson on television, he fell in love with boxing. Realising his natural ability with the gloves, an undefeated Abraham was crowned world champion in only his third year of professional boxing. That was the greatest moment of my life. My dream of becoming world champion had come true. I wept because I was so happy, and on that day the whole world belonged to me. And with the world title came the global nickname of King Arthur. A big reason for Abraham's success is his pairing with the legendary German trainer Uli Wegner. If you train with me, you have to train hard. And if he wants to remain successful, then he has to accept these demands. In order to achieve great things in competitive sport, you must go through pain. Everyone likes to avoid pain, so as trainer, I have to help Arthur fight through this barrier. He's brought me from zero to a hundred. No, not a hundred, a hundred thousand. Not every trainer can do that. That's why he's something special. In 2006, the boxing world opened its eyes to one of the gutsiest performances ever seen in the square circle. In his middleweight title defence against Edison Miranda, King Arthur suffered a broken jaw in the fourth round, but amazingly managed to hold his nerve to retain the title by unanimous decision. The jaw was broken in two places, so it wasn't easy. I kept running away. I attacked him, countered, then away again. I was quick on my feet and he couldn't catch me. If he caught me, I could have lost. I always emphasize quite clearly that it was my decision to let Arthur keep fighting with a broken jaw. Certainly, it didn't look very pretty at all, but I think he controlled it very well. I know that if it had been the top of his jaw, I would have stopped it. We have a motto, live or die in the ring, but never fall to your knees. That fight saw Miranda throw some questionable blows and even a headbutt. In a return fight, with a heel jaw, Abraham had the chance for some payback, knocking the Ecuadorian out in the fourth round. Jesus. Knocking him out felt really sweet. He deserved it too because he broke my jaw in the previous fight. To knock him out in the fourth round of the return fight though in a way wasn't that great. It was a little bit too early. I'd rather have knocked him out in the eighth, ninth or tenth round, but he was lucky it was over so quickly. In his 29 undefeated fights as a professional, the IBF champion has demonstrated the power of his punch with 23 knockouts. One of his drills to achieve this feat is training with three kilo weights strapped to each hand. It takes a lot of strength and of course you're a bit slower, but afterwards when you take the cuffs off, then you're like a bomb. You become so quick and so powerful. I think I have a hard punch, but it's for the experts to say whether I have the hardest punch or not. This training is enough for me to land good knockout punches, put it like that. It's this sort of training discipline that the camp believes has taken European boxing to its current level of global domination. I think Europeans stay at the top because they have more discipline. Without discipline, nothing works. And many Americans don't have this control. They become world champion, then they lose discipline. American Kelly Pavlik, the WBC and WBO champion, will help put this theory to the test when they meet in a divisional unifier. Of course, that is a great dream, but as I see it, Pavlik is backing out. One time he's injured, the next time he doesn't want to fight. They always have an excuse and I don't know why. I'm always ready to box against him and I want to box. I want to become the middleweight super champ. Then I'll change my weight class. A move up to super middleweight isn't far off for Abraham and if he does enter the heavier weight division, his opponents will have to watch out as King Arthur believes the best is yet to come. I don't need to emphasize it. He still has plenty of room to get better because he wants to become something very special. We are halfway there. We still have really big ambitions. My trainer says I'm still at only 60%. And if he says it, that's how it is. I believe in him. So we have another 40% to go. And the best is still to come. <laughs>